Hello, Ukraine War Awareness here, and today I want to get into the topic of some new tanks that were debuted at recent army expos or military forums, whatever you want to call them, over the last couple of months from Russia, Poland, and the US with their Army 2016, MSPO, and AUSA respectively. So the tanks I'll be discussing today are new upgrades or modernizations per se, new designs built over the layout of older designs, which includes the T-72 from the Russian and Polish Army Expos, and from a combination of Abrams and Bradley technologies for the US Expo. This isn't a video set to compare the new tanks to each other, but just to show in which direction some tank design bureaus have decided to go using their secondary or even spare resources, as these are new technology demonstrators but are meant mostly for export and not to be the main replacer of something domestic. Anyways, the new tanks I am talking about is firstly the new Russian T-90 MS Prorev 3, which means Breakthrough version 3. Before I get started on this tank, I first want to say that it is a very common misconception that the tank's name is T-90MS, with its original name being the T-90SM, M being the designation for modernized T-90S. But the misconception grew so largely that even the display now shows the tank as T-90MS. For the purpose of not creating any confusion, I will refer to this tank as MS. Though keep in mind that the Russian domestic version is known as the T-90AM, because it will be brought up soon. Now, I heard rumors before that Ural Vagonzavod, the Russian tank bureau and manufacturer, was planning on putting the 2A82 gun, which is the T-14 Armada main cannon, on the T-90. But I just put a mental note of it in my head and regarded it as rumors due to Russia claiming to put most of its priorities into the Armada project. But it turns out that the T-90 MS Prorev 3 was on, that was on display at Army 2016 has the upgraded cannon, replacing the modernized 2A46M5 gun with a 2A82 gun. Now, to not confuse things, the T-14 Armada uses the 2A82M1 gun, Modernized version 1, which removes the fume extractor because the turret is unmanned, but the original 2A82 development goes back to the 1980s. It also features a new barrel bent detector that's present on the Armada. I'm sure that this new gun, despite the lack of the M designation, is still a revamped, redesigned version of the 2A82 than the original. This gives the T90 MS Breakthrough 3 the ability to fire brand new 21st century rounds that are, or were, Armada exclusive. This includes the Vacuum 1 Sabot round, which is the depleted uranium shell capable of penetrating 1000 mm of RHA or ho rolled homogeneous armor, the Sprinter anti-tank guided missile, which is a significant upgrade of the already near 100% accurate Reflex ATGM, or to be more exact, the 9M119M1, otherwise known as the INVAR-M, which was made for the 2A46M5 gun as an upgrade to the Reflex ATGM, which has a model number of 9M119M without the additional 1. I know these numbers may be confusing at first to a person that's new to tank modernizations, but these are just modernization designations. And of course, the T-90MS now has the capability to fire the new HE frag shell called Telnik, which has a remote detonation capability as well as the fourth round which is still classified even by its name, but is presumably a heat shell category if analyzing the four types of ammunition carried in the Soviet tanks since the T-64 development. Anyways, besides combining technologies from the T-14, what Ural Vagonzavod has stated about the Breakthrough 3 tank is that they have incorporated lessons learned from Syria fighting into this tank, which seems possible considering that Russia donated a batch of old T-90 tanks. And note, by T-90, it's not the T-90A even, but the previous first-generation T-90s to the Syrian Arab army. That could refer to perhaps an upgraded Stora active protection system or an added urban warfare package, 
since the Armada is a full ton heavier with that package. While the Breakthrough 3 weighs 2 tons more than the original T90MS, going up from 48 tons to 50 tons. Besides the gun, there aren't any visible exterior changes, but the interior changes could also be upgraded, such as including the T90 MS's into the FCS network, or Future Combat System network, for net-centric warfare. Though speculation at this point, it's only logical to go down that path of fully unifying friendly units into the virtual IFF, uh, Identification Friend or Foe Battle Network. Kind of like the situation with the BTR-80A, and then the BTR-82 came along, which the first having an upgrade of only the turret and primary gun, and the latter being a modernized project on the interior mechanics, which later evolved to the BTR-82AM, despite looking identical to the BTR-80A. Except for the added stabilizer on the BTR-82AM. Russia, despite their earlier statements of focusing primarily on the Armada project, said that it will upgrade its existing T90As to the T90AM Prorev 3 standard, just like they are upgrading their T72B and T72B1 tanks to the T72B4, or as others may know it as the T72B3M standard, which is a very cost-effective modernization plan. 150 T72Bs and B1s to the B4s for only $37 million. This is likely done as a stopgap measure until the Armada is fully complete with its state trials and is accepted into military service in large quantities, just as with the BTR-82. This would mean that the T-72s will have the T-90 standards and the T-90MS Proto-3 will have the T-14 standards, similar to how the Ukrainian T-64B on Bulat has the T-80UD standards. So that's one down and two to go. Next up is the Polish MSPO exhibition that was held during the same time frame as Army 2016. Poland revealed that they are now offering a modernization package to any T-72 and PT-91 Twardy owners to be upgraded to the new PT-16 tank, which is a fully revamped, completely modernized T-72 tank that is meant to combine the best traits of the Leopard 2A5 and the PT-91 tanks. This tank is filled with international parts. First, you see a panoramic sight is added on top of the turret, which gives it a 360 degree view and not shared by any T-72 tank besides the T-72B4, which was only unveiled in early 2016. The turret is entirely changed with a new drive stabilizer system, as well as changing the 125mm 2A46M1 gun with a 120mm NATO configured gun that is domestically produced based on the Rheinmetall model, and although not revealed who designed and licensed the gun, meaning it's not an L55 gun, but is however capable of firing Rheinmetall's latest rounds. Uh, IHS Janes believes the gun to be of Slovakian or Ukrainian design. The PT-16 is capable of firing two different types of rounds, being the latest DM-63 Sabbat round and the DM-11HE frag round, with a source from Janes stating one of these rounds being a modular propellant round, which would be a major leap in armament. For a quick rundown on what a modular propellant round is, it's a round that has a two-stage loading mechanism, one for the round and the other for the powder-like propellant substance, gunpowder for the shells if you will. The only other two tank shells that are currently modular propellant is the US M829A4 round for the SEPV3 Abrams version, and the Armada's Vacuum 1 round is also believed to be modular propellant. Other systems that use modular propellant ammunition is the 2S35 Coalitia SV self propelled gun, so it's a brand new form of armament technology. Hence why the Armada's autoloader is so classified that not even an artist's rendering exists out there, nor for the PT-16, which makes it one of the very few tanks with a 120mm Rheinmetall cannon that uses an autoloading mechanism, 
with other tanks including the French AMX-56 and the South Korean K2 Black Panther. It's thanks to the autoloader that the rate of fire is stable at 12 rounds per minute, fitted with 22 rounds in the autoloader, making the rate of fire faster than the K2 Black Panther and the T90 MS Prorev 3 autoloaders, as well as any manual loading tank. Another objective of the PT-16 is improving over the T-72's power to weight ratio. This is done by fitting the tank with a 1000 horsepower diesel engine, which oddly enough comes from a Serbian supplier. Despite promising trials of the French 1000 horsepower Rank R -E -N -K engine, which was tested on Polish PT-91 and T-72B tanks, which gave those tanks new features such as 360 degree pivot turns on the spot capabilities. Whether the PT-16 shares that capability is unknown, but with the Serbian engine claims, it can deliver up to 1,100 horsepower, but it hasn't been rated such by the Polish Tank Bureau. And obviously, since this is a main battle tank, it comes with a coaxial 7.62 machine gun and a remote weapon station on top of the turret, which is called ZSMUA4, which is manufactured domestically by Polish company Zakladu Mikanacja Tarnow, or ZMT, whom also designed the autoloader for the main battle tank. The tank comes standard with air conditioning, has an improved APU auxiliary power unit, and additional armor includes the Polish Qnet system, additional composite armor, new explosive reactive armor called ERAWA half-type reactive armor, and a laser warning system called OBRA-3. The tank also introduces a battlefield management system and ops an absolute must for any modern ba main battle tank. So despite being a LEGO construction of many international ports put together, Poland incorporated some of the PL-01 tank's earlier technologies into this tank, making an impressive modernization piece build on top of an old T-72 hull, which has always interested me personally on how each independent ex-Warsaw Nation Pact upgrade their old Soviet tanks and follow different technological paths that ultimately reach the same or similar results in the end. It's as if a T-72 has been given new life by choosing a unique direction of evolution. The only downside to this tank is that its RHA, Rolled Homogeneous Armor, with its new reactive armor, has only been measured at 800 millimeters, which is very low for a modern MBT, but nevertheless still better modernized than either nothing or building a completely new design from scratch, which would take years, probably even decades for some nations. And factors applying in such as kinetic force lost from an RPG by the QNET or other armored add-ons. Whether it can survive a direct hit by a tank remains to be seen, and it is unlikely that Poland will domestically accept this tank to, due to joint Rheinmetall Polish development of the Leopard 2PL to replace its Leopard's 2A4s and 2A5s, as well as the PL-01 concept still being worked on by Poland and BAE systems. Since it's mostly meant for export purposes, Ukraine War Awareness analyzes that it is a possibility that Malaysia may be one of the countries that one day purchases this upgrade package since they operate a number of PT-91Ms bought from Poland, with M being the, being the one and only instance where it's designated as Malaysia instead of modernized, so PT-91 Malaysia. Last but not least, we have the AUSA exhibition in Washington, D.C., and the most tank-like design that was showcased by General Dynamics which they called their Griffin Technology Demonstrator. Now, since there's no more light tank classifications and the chassis is taken from the British Ajax IFV, or SV as they call it, a specialist vehicle, and has been completely automatized and fitted with a lightened version of an Abrams tank, tank turret, weighing at only one third of it, and it includes the V3 configuration. 
It was developed within five months and was meant to showcase how rapidly the company General Dynamics can design a modular vehicle with features depending on what the consumer wants. Not much was given about it besides using a German power pack and some General Dynamics referred this as not an infantry fighting vehicle, not a tank, but as a platform. In front of it is laid out four shells, which gives me the assumption that General Dynamics has developed a Soviet capability of firing four different types of ammunition, which highly suggests that this has a crew of three with an autoloader. Since this is a technology demonstrator, as they say, three programs melded into one, which is the British Ajax, the Abrams turret, and features from the cancelled Future Combat System program, FCS, this is not seen as a solution, but more of a precursor to future developments and development capabilities. Weighing in at only 27 tons, it is easier to airlift and transport this vehicle and would be a modern addition to light infantry brigades and airborne troops. So this concludes the three latest tanks that were debuted at various exhibitions over the last two months. Whether we will see any country purchase or ever deploy any of these tanks remains to be seen, but from its, what it seems like, it is highly likely that we will be seeing more of the T-90 MS variant worldwide as it was recently demonstrated in Kuwait along as well as Vietnam, showing interests in purchasing a few dozens of the tank, expressing that they need a modern tank for their forces. Iran, however, has turned down the T-90 MS before in December of 2015, showing interest in the beginning of the month but later turning it down, turning down the offered contract for what they claim they will build their own domestic modern tank that still remains to be seen. Iran seems confident of domestically produced products, especially now with their sanctions seized. As well as for Russia itself, which will be modernizing old batches of T-90As into the AM Breakthrough 3 standard, the T-90AM, uh, Poland will most likely focus on the Leopard 2PL and the PL-01 investments, but may eventually announce modernization projects of the old T-72s and PT-91s uh, plans of their own. Uh, this has been showcasing the latest tanks from international military forums with Ukraine war awareness. Hit that like button to support the release of future videos. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below of what you think of these new modernized machines. And check out this channel's other videos that covers military exercises, translated Ukrainian war footages and analyses among many other var variety of videos and I will see you guys in the next one.